Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 27, the history of the PS2. With me, George, and as always joined by Tom, emotion engine to my one litre Ford Fiesta <laughs> engine. How's it going? Um, very well, thank you. How are you? Very good. Tom, let's give them a reason to stick around. Coming up in the news, PS5 news. Yeah. Then, the granddaddy of them all, the PS2 history of. Mm-hmm. Then we slip into Stingray's boot, or Listener's Stingray, where we look at the listeners' pickups. Then we leap into the area of the show where we find out what's coming out this week on all the different consoles, ranging from Atari 2600 <laughs> all the way through to the 486 gaming PC. Oh, yeah. And then we end the show, very similar to how we start the show, where I ask you what you're hoping to play, and we start the show when I ask you, Tom, what you been playing we're just really slick at that now, aren't we? Well, we would have been if you'd have just answered. Yeah, I, I know. Let us down again. <laughs> next week. Next week it happens for... It, insert CGI for here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week I've been playing quite a few online games again. Um, uh. Apex Legends has had a, a new season start, season three. Um, Red Dead Redemption Online. Um, I've been doing the missions as the bounty hunter. Uh, I see you've still not coming back me up. Took on the whole Owl Hoot family last week. Me and Finster Games were in a posse together. Oh. <laughs> Crushed. We call ourselves the casual cowpokes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> hey, cowpoke. And um, we, I'm dressed like the rain, Lone Ranger from Disney's reboot. Right. And he's dressed as like a... A bearded lady, but he's armed to the teeth. Oh, a good look. The casual cowpoke. Yeah, so um, getting back on topic. Yes. Red, Red Dead Online, Apex Legends, um, a few games of Overwatch this week, uh, just to try and keep in the loop. And uh, I've got a bit further on Link's Awakening. Overwatch on Switch? No, that's not out till the 15th next week, so looking forward I to that I thought you'd one. banned all other forms of Overwatch. Yeah, I was trying to, but I don't Bing want bong. to... Bing bong, who's won a prize on the official <laughs> controller bit and go? Red Dead Redemption 2, eyes down looking for the numbers, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Overwatch. Full house. Two winners there. Who's it going to be, Tom? Um, well, we're going to have Daddy Zilla, because he's been away this week, so he deserves homecoming. a prize. Homecoming. What's he got? Uh, Some white wine, cinnamon swirls. Okay, cinnamon swirls. Yeah. And who and who else has won the other one? This one's white wine. I don't know if it's white wine vinegar because the label's been scuffed against a wall. So, whatever. Bite my pixel. He's won. Um, he's won some uh, kitchen towel. <laughs> good, good for cleaning up anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Any other games? Uh, yeah. So I got a bit further on Link's Awakening on the Switch. Uh, really enjoying it. I find it quite difficult at this point now. It's it's not so much the complex of the puzzles; it's finding out where to go, mm. and what item you need to get. Like I got I got the flippers recently, so I can access like the water temple or whatever it's called in this Yay. one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so definitely not as hard as the ocarina water temple. Um, that's about it, really. Yeah. Mm. What have you been playing? Went to the cabin, didn't I? So we had some oh, PS2, yeah? and I got to the gang war section as I promised I would. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, well, it's an add-on to a main game, isn't it? <laughs> it's not quite as good as one might remember. Yeah. Uh, what else have we played? Is there, is there Shades of the Warriors game in that part of San Andreas? or Not really. I just, I, I remember you them both to... having a tagging system. I didn't know whether it was... Um... No, that's, again, it's more like a collectible to yeah. San Andreas, if you remember. You just got to spray every other mm-hmm. gang's tags. Yeah. And this uh, this gang war thing... It's more like you walk into a square that's not yours, you walk into the middle of it, you mow down a couple of guys. That initiates a mini game of these waves of guys coming. Yeah. If you take them down, then the area goes green, it's yours. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite hard oh. on your own. I remember that I think I've got a mission to do with Sweet where I think you unlock the skill to get people in your car. And if I remember back to the when I played it originally you could get like a minivan and get a whole load yes, of them in yeah. and then go do it, which is what I, you know, on your own it's quite hard, but I think with multiple Grove Street homies, this should be a cakewalk. <laughs> Another game I've been playing that I've forgotten I've been playing uh, is Transformers War for Cybertron. Oh. What a great game. 
That's on PS2, isn't it? Uh, no, it's on PS3. Oh, and it? Xbox 360. Yes, because we were looking the other week, weren't we, what I would have been playing instead of Ghostbusters when it originally came out. And you were like, War for Cybertron. Um, I thought, again, and, uh, one for the ages, out. Tom. And, and this will have to go on all the unofficial controller podcast T-shirts. I think you had Transformers War for Cybertron. Uh-huh. Will the T-shirt just be a list of all the, the games thing you is, think I'm, of playing? I know I had that. I know I had Ghostbusters. Yeah. What was it, the game that came out, Red Dead Redemption? I know I had that as well. Hmm. Yes. That's all you got to say on the matter. Do you want to ask me a little bit more about War for Cybertron? Yeah, what sort of um, genre game is it? Gears of War. Oh, is it? Mm. What, with Transformers? Yeah. How's the scale work on that? What are you covering behind, like a tower block? You're on Cybertron, aren't you? So it's all in scale. To oh, sometimes okay, right. you see, you realise that you're playing as the, something bigger. You're playing as two of the. You play as the uh, Decepticons to start with, then you switch to the Autobot. Campaign. Oh, that's interesting. And there's three to four playable characters for each level, always a bit different. Yeah. And sometimes you're playing as Prime, and you forget that he's <laughs> like a, a transformed truck. He's huge. Yeah. And then something else comes in, like uh, Mega Supreme, who's absolutely huge like 50 times taller than prime and he gets infected with dark energy on and you have to take him down or i can't remember which way around you take him down into decepticons and you free him as the autobots great game really cool the play mechanics work well uh i don't know if there's a cover i've sold you down the river of gears but it's it's gritty it's over the shoulder yeah. it's that kind of game i'm trying to think what else i've been playing Sounds good Got some games lined up for the weekend because I've not been back for a long time. So MLB, I'm going to download and play. Yeah, uh, Still which is currently uh, free on PS Plus Monthly. That's right, that's why we're getting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm also going to try and get hold of Alain Noir. Yep. Downloading something this weekend out the boot. This is what I'm hoping to play. I've got ahead of myself, Tom. <laughs> Are you all done for what you've been you playing? Have. Yes, uh, that's it for me this week. So we're going to slip, slop and slide into the news? Yeah. We scour the darkest regions, the very darkest regions of the internet, to bring you the latest stories. First up, Tom, is this you or me? I'll take it if you want. Okay, do your best. Uh, do your best at that. PS Five Alive. Oh, I thought you were going to do the short circuit. Yeah. Skit. Yeah, it's why it's mm. there. I didn't feel confident. Put it out. That Put Welsh it. guy. <laughs> Your Welsh accent's not the best, is it? PlayStation dropped some more info this week on the now very originally called PlayStation Five. <laughs> <laughs> As well as an official name, the console will launch in the fall of 2020, so plenty of time to get saving for it. It will come with a 4K Blu-ray disc drive, which should please the physical game fans out there, as we we sort of heard rumours of maybe digital-only consoles being the the next gen. Not in my town. (laughs) Backwards compatibility, though, is still up in the air, and it's been confirmed that most PS4 games will work, but sadly there might be some that won't be playable. Uh, Sony is trying to get 100% of those titles working though, um, which would be which would be great to have that 100% backwards compatibility. Uh, one last bit of info announced: we will be able to have more control over what parts of games we install first. Mm. So, if you're a fan of the single player, you can download that first. I noticed that sort of there are options to do that now, but I think this is going to be even more in depth. Hold the press, though, Tom. Looks like my uh, movie library, physical movie library, is about to get an upgrade with the PS5 rocking a 4K Blu-ray yeah, player. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Mm. It'd be nice to... Um, I think that 4K telly will get some work. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I will make the step up to 4K TV with the PS5. And, uh, Ooh, yeah. bustling up. Yeah, finally. Um, yeah, as a... I was quite an early adopter of HD when it came out, but 4K seems to have eluded me this gen. Anyway, uh, what we got next, mate? Mm, so coming up next bit of news, Weekend Combat. It's a kind gesture from NetherRealm Studios and Warner Brothers. Mortal Kombat 11 will be available to play for free this weekend from October 11th to the 14th on PS4 and Xbox One. The multiplayer part of the game will require you to have either PS Plus or Xbox Live respectively. How's that working out then? Are they going to give the game away or free no, to I think, I think, this weekend? I think or? you'll just download it and it'll be like a timed trial of like the full game. Uh, yeah, very important. If you've got Xbox Live or PS Plus, you will be able to do the multiplayer part of the game. 
And, um, well, if not, you can just enjoy the single player story. Um, but I've, I've heard that's pretty good, Mortal Kombat 11. It's got some interesting DLC characters with a Terminator announced the other day. He oh, pretty yes. Because cool, he goes like right down and to that the... that terrible looking Joker. Oh, that's uh, that's the one in... that James the Work Experience Boy <laughs> did for them. Is he... Did they bring him in from Injustice and he just didn't look like the one from Injustice? We've discussed this before. But... I haven't looked, but all I yeah. know is when I saw the trailer, no, the, it the, terrible. The, um, the T-900, or T-800, T-800. the Arnie one, um, he uh, goes right down to the sort of skeletal frame. It looks pretty cool. He does. Yeah. Can I do the next one? You I, can, I, I, of course. The... Hey, cowpoke. <laughs> He's been working on that all week. It's a lot of wood bites. <laughs> I've also now got throat and lung cancer. Yeah, it's too bad. <laughs> I haven't, that was a joke. You know, that, hence the raspy voice. Yes. What's the news then? Oh, I just wanted to do the Hey Cowboy <laughs> bit. <laughs> oh, right, I've, got, I've got to read here. it out, boy. Rockstar is finally bringing the new legendary Red Dead Redemption 2 to PC on November the 5th. Gunpowder, treason and plot indeed. Oh, good old James there with that. Seeing yeah. as it's nearly... A few little hints there as to how the story goes. Oh, I see. Well, he's Thomas a clever boy, one, isn't he? One for the spoilers, this young James. He is. Uh, do about that. I think oh, we're going to see some amazing in-game shots. I've seen some 4K shots. It looks, it, it looks great. Someone's got like a twenty-five thousand pound mega machine. Just uh, a little bit of add-on news for that. Uh, Red Dead Redemption on the PC. <coughs> Red, sorry, Red Dead Redemption Two. Um, it's going to have several of the online items put into the story mode so some of the updated guns horses clothing is going to be in the story mode for pc gamers to enjoy oh, that is pretty cool i think it's a bit weak not to update the console version with that because there's a lot of us who still play the story mode trying to 100 percent it or the pc never got the original red red, red dead redemption did it i'm unsure i don't, I don't think it did i think you might be right anyway big news moving on well, uh, doomed in some disappointing news, the excellent-looking Doom Eternal has been delayed until March 20th, 2020, and even later for the Nintendo Switch, with no release date confirmed for Nintendo's machine. Uh, this is sad news, but here at Unofficial Controller, we like when developers take the time to release a quality prog- product over a rushed one, and uh, we'll be sure it'll be worth the wait. I think the Switch will ever get that now? Mm, I do... It's obviously not... They're not delaying this because of next gen consoles, unless they're going to release like a version next winter that's higher spec and stuff. But yeah, to answer your question, I think it will. They, 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 a lot of the versions of Switch third party games do sometimes take longer to to appear. Uh, which, if you only own a Nintendo Switch, you just see it as a later release date. But for me, I've, I've got the PS. If you're into Doom, you certainly don't have a Switch as your main console, do you? Let's face it. You're not an absolutely massive Doom fan and the only console you've got in the house is, is a Switch. Yeah, that's a good point. Um I had I played the this like the the last Doom, uh which this Doom Eternal is gonna be the sequel of, so I'm really looking forward to it. It looks really good. Mm. Apparently it's their most biggest and ambitious game so far. What games machine are you gonna get that on? I think I'll get it on PS4 because I've seen it running at like sixty FPS and sort of 4k screen and it looks really good so yeah having it in handheld doesn't trump that better um sort of visual aspect what's the last bit of news welcome to the upside down rocket league is getting a special halloween event starting on the 14th of october and it'll be a stranger things themed event the next flick series is coming to rocket league with special arenas decals and other items happy right. about that do you play rocket league uh, I've played it, yeah. It's it's quite good, quite enjoyable, good fun. Um, Never played it myself. You know, I think that if I try to jump in now, it would be a whitewash all over the shop. So I've of not the, been uh, interested uh, in it. Well, yeah, that's the problem with a lot of online games, isn't it? If you miss that initial thing, it's it's a struggle. To... I think three years ago, Rocket League was taking off. Yeah. And I should have been on that boat then. But... Uh, have the kids played it? Are they into it? It's quite. Man. I thought it was quite popular with younger audiences as well. They like bigger boy games now, like War for oh. Cybertron. 
<laughs> I thought you were going to say yeah, Fall of like Red Dead Warrior. Redemption or mm. Grand Theft Auto. Oh yeah, big fans of that with yeah. the shark cards. <laughs> Them and Finster the game of raising hell in the casinos. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so, how do the collective masses get in touch with us? If well, did we comment? miss anything? Do you have an opinion or take on the news we might have missed? How yeah. do they get in touch? Tom, this is a question I normally ask you. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> how. They can email us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com or DM us on Instagram or Twitter, like yeah. so many of you do. Before we launch into the feature, a couple of bits of housekeeping. PS2 is obviously a popular console uh, because we've been inundated with fan feedback again. I think I've done my best to include everybody. Yeah, New listeners, the lot, and mm-hmm. hardcore and glorious bar stewards. Secondly, now we have their respected attentions. Should we line them up, Barry Badges? Should we wheel out? Or oh, no, not. We're not. It's no, he's, he's off this week. Okay. So, unofficial controller podcast, stand at ease. Yep. What's the message this week, Tom? Well, oh, felt. same as last week, we'd love you to go out, leave a review, rate us five stars on whatever podcast platform you listen to us on. So that could be Spotify, iTunes, what, what, what others are there? Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Stitcher, Podcast, yeah. Amazon Alexa. Yeah. A whole lot. So please, please, please do that because it keeps the show and the wheels turning here at Unofficial Controller Towers. Keeps Tom paid. Or the bunker, as we call it. Yeah. Um, keeps it, the electric bill paid. It keeps uh, Sensei Rius another night on the streets as vigilante of the streets of Farmerton at night time, keeping us safe from the bigger yeah. boys. I heard a... AAA developer was interested in doing like a Streets of Rage crossover with Sensei Rius. Basically him oh, walking, down a, walking down a walking a, down a village street in Farmerton lay, <laughs> lay, like laying waste to um, does, does he get extra health points? Does he like save he his does, game yeah. the red telephone box in the middle yeah, of the village near the duck pond? That's it, that's the Brilliant. save point. Get some that was a Minecraft eating noise. He gets some crisps from the wagon. And Brian the, the mechanic is level one boss. He comes out. Why is he a bad guy to Sensei Rears? He is. He's he's a bit shifty. Maybe maybe level one at the start of level one. Uh, <laughs> Sensei Rears takes his car to the mechanic, and then he fights all the way back to the garage. And then when he gets there, he gets presented with this crazy bill for like four thousand pounds <laughs> for replacement of a bulb, <laughs> and that's when it kicks off. Love it. He drops Brian's Brian the Garager. <laughs> Brian the Garager? Brian, that's the, <laughs> way too much Minecraft. Brian... The mechanic. The mechanic flicks down his uh, welding cap. mask. Oh, right. And that's his weapon, the torch. Oh, that's cool. And Sensei Rias has to stand back and perform the Red Dragon Punch. We should design games. You've had a go at that. It didn't work out too well. Uh. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. You did on the RPG <laughs> section. It was absolutely <laughs> terrible. I'm not even going to defend your feelings. Now, anymore. that is one game I'll give to you that I did own, but it's one of those that you'll probably say, you own that, and I'll be like, no, I didn't. You and Mumsy bought two copies of that, and I <laughs> think we got to like number 74 in the chart. <laughs> Nearly as high as us. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I know. Uh, we were very grateful of uh, everyone's hard We're back hard in the work. top 50, weren't we? The other yeah. Week? Uh, seemed to be a real buzz on Saturday, so we're hoping for the same again. What we, uh, oh well, if if we dare venture to the top of the charts again, we need the listeners to get as many people subscribing in a week as they can. That's how it works, isn't it? It certainly is. Tell all your friends, what's wrong with you? You stood at the water cooler and you're discussing anything other than the unofficial controller podcast, you are dead to me. If you're not linking this show all over the place, you're no longer a gamer. <laughs> Isn't that right? It's true. You're no longer a gamer. Anyway. Their patience has been well met, Tom. Because it has. now it's time for the feature. The history of the PS2 feature. This week's feature is a discussion around the history of the PlayStation 2. As always, you guys got in touch to share those cherished memories of not only Sony's, but the best-selling console of all time. Mm-hmm. As always, listeners, to do this, we need to time travel. As always, we utilise the Burgundy Maestro Turbo with a murky past <laughs> and even worse, green luminous striping. So let's descend down to floor two and pick up our time machine. Tom, do you want to open the lift door? In fact, it's open. We left it open because oh, we yeah, didn't have a sound time. effect for the door opening. <laughs> so we're in the lift now. And if you could just, there you go, 
the the button under the zoo, but above the cross channel ferry. Awesome. That's it. Press that one. And down we go. That's the door shutting, Tom. Normally about seven seconds from here, we can make a comment about the lift music. Bam! I think we're here. Are we here? We're here. And there she is, Tom. Hey, is that a faux orange traffic light air freshener you've put in there? (laughs) Tom, I've got to ask you, does this say time travel in some way? It does. It relieves the smell if you go back to a bad era. So if you went back to... (laughs) You went back to like the plague era. It will see you all right. You know, like the witch, doc- like the 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 guys with the beaks and they had herbs in the end of the nose. Yes, it's like that, but for us. Little did we know, so much technology packed into a nineteen eighties air freshener that smells like that uncle you should never been left alone with. <laughs> Look, let's climb in and take a sip out of the out of date McDonald's Coke on the floor, and let's go. Tom, hit the blast process button. What's blast processing? So what's blast processing do? Whoa. Whoa. Tom. Wow. Is that time? That time? air freshener's gone to my head. <laughs> I think it <yeah>. has. Strong fumes. <laughs> I'm well, that's what they call time travel. Uh, Tom, I can barely speak. But uh, let's pull ourselves together. Uh, here we are, as always. We visit the console's launch. This time, instead of Japan, we've chosen America. New York, to be exact. October 26th. The year 2000. The city that never sleeps. The city that never sleeps. But before we pick over the launch games, let's have a look back at the machine's road to this point. Sony had been very tight-lipped on a successor to the original PlayStation. Uh, Development began around the time that the original PlayStation was released, say, late 1994. Insiders stated that it was developed in the US West Coast by former members of the Argonaut Software. Mm. By the arrival of 1997, the word was out and the press announced that the console would have backwards compatibility with the original PlayStation, a built-in DVD player, and internet connectivity. Sony announced the PlayStation 2, or the PS2, as it will become to be known, and we'll probably refer to it as as we go through. On March 1st, 1999, the video game was positioned as a competitor to Sega's Dreamcast, the first sixth-generation console to be released, although after the Dreamcast early demise... The PS2 ended up head to head with Nintendo's GameCube and Microsoft's Xbox. Um, yeah, very good. Looks like you've picked the apocalyptic paragraph of them all, Tom. Don't you uh, worry. Good luck I'm with gonna... that one. The hardware side of the PS2, though, was based around the much lauded Emotion Engine, a custom design processor based on the MIPS architecture with a floating point performance of 6.2 G flops. And the custom design graphics I synthesizer, Giga flops. Giga flops, I think so. Giga, Giga. Uh, custom design graphics synthesizer GPU with a fill rate of two point four gigapixels per second, capable of rendering up to seventy five million polygons per second. Wow. When accounting for features such as lighting, texture mapping, artificial intelligence, and game physics, it has a real world performance of three million to sixteen million polygons per second. Tom, what does that mean? Good graphics, mate. (laughs) In all seriousness, it did allow developers some great creative freedom in some genre-defining games. And it's this point that, uh, based on that point, that I want to pay homage. Tom, doth your cap. He's almost like the godfather now. Boss of Finster Games. Farmerton's only surviving game shop after the game shop wars. Not even CEX could survive that burning aggression. Do you want to head up his... Uh, what's his uh, comment there? Uh, Finster the Gamer goes on to say, PS2 is my favourite console ever with some of the best games ever made. The Grand Theft Auto games, Silent Hill 2, Hitman 2, Manhunt. I could name these bangers all day. <laughs> the best thing is that it was the last generation before achievements, trophies came in. So you were playing these expensive, ex- expansive games just for the love of playing them. No checklist to follow, no weekly tasks, no timed events, just pure, unadulterated, open sandbox freedom. He makes a good point. I mean, I do, when I get to kick back, I'll go back to the PS2. Because it's just that... It's, Load in the game, play the game. It just feels... Like, the games just feel completely on their own. Often when you've got trophies popping in and out, or achievements oh, an popping update. in and out, and updates yeah. and stuff, you put the game in, you play it, you feel locked into that world, nothing... Brings you back yeah. out. Sometimes yeah, an achievement a or a trophy pop brings you out of the game world. 
yeah, I think the the novelty after the 360 PS3 era kind of wore off, and I'm of the same I mean, opinion. We all want I think. Now. If it's free, give it me a trophy. I'll take it. <laughs> but you know, we don't. <laughs> they serve no purpose. And yeah, they're here to stay. But is that a good thing? I think there's an argument for both, isn't there? All right. Maybe yeah. one day we shall have that argument. Mm. Moving on, though. The built-in DVD player, not only letting everyone wow at the clarity of Gladiator and the Matrix, the early DVD pioneers, also allowed for a massive game world that were open and for the first time in gaming really felt alive. Mm. Uh, on the note of DVD pioneers, Tom, you see I picked your first ever DVD, Gladiator. Oh, mate. The DVD that sold more PS2 consoles than Fantavision. Yeah. <laughs> that looks so good on that. I remember showing it to the family at Christmas when we, me and my brother had just got the PS2 and um, they were like, wow, the quality. Compared Weird. to Stingray VHS that we had had before. He was a soldier of Rome. I don't know why you dislike that film. I don't dislike it. I just think it's a bit Top Gun. Oh, mate, it's better than that. Okay. Doogie McBain, anyway. I'll uh, Let's bring him in. Uh, currently reigning... Just to let you know, oh. we recently acquired the uh, postage information for Dugan McBain. Mm. Uh, so the parcel will be dispatched because the village post office is open like once every uh, quarter of the moon. It's uh, <laughs> it's going to be it'll be it'll be sent out by Monday. So your uh, community chest will be on its way. So please don't be disheartened if you've not received it yet. But yeah, he is the uh, current reigning champion of the commenter of the Up month. Up on the turnbuckles, two smashed cans of iron brew, and he roars down at the commentary table where we're sat with this one, Tom. Me and my brother got our PS2 only because he had bought a D... B- B- what? Doogie, I'm sorry. It's To be honest, I'm covered in your iron brew. You've spat all over me <laughs> while shaking your head uh, and, and telling me you don't give... A, a rat's ass. Me and my brother got our PS2 only because he had bought a DVD player, which back then were very expensive. However, it broke within its warranty period, so we got our money back. Used the money to get a PS2 because it could play DVDs too. Boy, am I glad we did that. GTA 3, Metal Gear Solid 2, and the WWE SmackDown series are a few of the games I have fond memories of. I was more into the original Xbox, however, the PS2 will always provide me with good memories. I didn't realise he put the WWE reference in there, but Tom, slick as ever, we made it work. Oh, man. He's just added me in the uh, McBain Estrainer. <laughs> it's his finishing move. He's, he's, running, he's running wild. Is that a move that breaks... He's just, you? He's just legged it on a Zamboni. Is that the move that gives you groin strain? <sighs> it is, yeah. What's it really called hurts. again? The McBain Estrainer. <laughs> That is absolutely But yeah, epic. going back to his comments, some uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, that Hang was a on. massive First game. First listener to upload a creator wrestler of Doogie McBain. Or better yet, a video of you pulling off the McBain strainer. Whatever you think it might be, send us your best efforts. <laughs> okay, where did we get to? Also, back to the story, Tom. Also, the console had a PlayStation 1 chip built in, so backwards compatibility for the huge library of original PlayStation games helped ease the console under Mummy and Daddy's nose and left you with more than Fantavision on Christmas <laughs> morning. I had time to hear from a couple more listeners. Tom, who's first up here? The Barbaro Games. The man who can. The what? kingmaker. He is. Uh, while the original PlayStation was my first console, the PlayStation 2 was the one. Uh, I have the most memories with. <laughs> when I look back on it, I still remember for the longest time it was basically just a glorified DVD player in the house before I really started getting into gaming properly. There's just something special about the console, even if it technically wasn't the most powerful system compared to its rivals. And in the end, it pretty much proved that in the the games or what sells a console. Uh, something Sony would learn the hard way at the start of the next generation. There were so many great games released for the PS2 as well, for uh, the point where my backlog for the system alone is massive with some of my favourite games of all time releasing for it like Persona 4 and Tales of the Abyss he continues oh he does it's crazy to believe that even today the system is still the best selling of all time and hiding at the back of the queue no stop there's a little break there the dot dot dots always signify the end of someone's quote okay 
Would you like to what continue? What did you think of uh, the Barber Who Games there? Yeah, some good points. Solid points. Mm. I can't believe that he thought it was a glorified DVD player <laughs> before he got into gaming. Yeah. He's a very, had a very sheltered life. You look <laughs> at his games library now and there's a man who was a late burner. Yes. Uh, hiding at the back of the queue, uh, this little queue we've had here, Tom, which you nearly uh, stumbled into as part of his speech, uh, with a bag of Tiger handhelds to snack on to keep his energy up, seeing as PCSO Kent won't let him have any access to the nibbles in his back bedroom. We've got the show's immortal console serial killer. We must make that safe. We must let people know. You don't kill people. It he kills consoles. Old consoles. Old consoles. Or any yeah. console. Yeah, he's got taste for new blood as well, I think. <laughs> um, Let's see what he has to say for He himself. says, The Ooh. PS2 is still one of my all-time favourite consoles. The range of games was awesome, and it launched a lot of great game series like Kingdom Hearts, Jack and Daxter... Um, plus GTA 3 was an awesome sandbox uh, game. Also, with Sony sticking a DVD player inside, was an absolute masterstroke. It's probably why it's still the best-selling home console of all time. My favourite games on the system will probably be any of the GTAs, Vice City probably being my overall favourite. Uh, I also love the Devil May Cry series and Gran Turismo 3. It's probably one of the best of the series to date. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... Uh, I got Gran Turismo 3, and I wasn't really into races that much, but it really drew me into the uh, the racing genre. I mean, 4 for me is possibly one of the best racing games ever made. Yeah, I, I'd be keen to try that, because I've always heard you say good things about it. But the yeah, menus, um, the cars, the graphics, just everything just felt right, mm-hmm. you know, and that... That sense of ownership in a racing game we've often talked about. I mean, you're probably going to tell me that what's, that's what GT3 gives you, but I felt that <laughs> in way more spades in 4. Well, GT3, we were speaking about this at, at work the other day. Um, some of the lads, we, play, we played the intro video on YouTube, and it's, uh, it, yeah, a lot of nostalgia there. A lot of nostalgia. Uh, well, Tom, that's all the technical jargon and uh, is... all the a couple of excerpts and listeners. That's... Uh, it's a, I think it's a console that nearly everyone owned, isn't it, really? I think so. Um, but uh, You had one, I had one. All these people. I am going to pull you up now. Through. I'm going to pull you up now. Oh, right. Because it's time for a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Okay. Me and my brother got the PS2 at launch. Yes. You were a Dreamcast owner at that point. I <laughs> was. Bummed out and hurt. Coming through. Coming through, strolling through like Vince McMahon. Walks down the, uh, <laughs> the ramp. Comes through next door. Yep. on a family Christmas and he's uh, what's this not very good is it really not very good games ready to rumble boxing not very good well, I have to be- why you got a DVD player you don't need a DVD player oh let's fast forward Christmas day New Year's Eve oh you've been out and got some more games over Christmas yeah what's this time splits oh, that looks quite good <laughs> Rockstar Smuggler's Run never heard of him hmm Smuggler's Run that's quite enjoyable that <laughs> I don't remember saying this but this is this is this is true this I is was fact. Iris hero worshipped at the time so no doubt every single word that came out oh I was immortalised yeah let me yeah. write that down he's, he's liking paper. it he's liking it show him some more games show him some more games <laughs> I have to the first launch games I was not impressed with. They didn't look any better. I think I had a I had a Dreamcast at the time and I probably was a little sore, but the Dreamcast had already had enough time to establish itself. So a lot of the games yeah, were really that, good on there. The PS2's launch games and the first sort of six months were clumsy. Yeah. I'll give you that one because it's very true even today. You stack up a console that's probably a bit how long had the Dreamcast been out by then? A year, two years? A year and a half. I didn't think it was a year. That long, did it? So <laughs> well, it no. about a year. I think it was a year because we looked at getting one the year before, and, and I uh, picked mine up in January, February. Yeah. So they, they were they were hitting the stride with some uh, some good quality titles then. So yeah, launch games are always a little bit suspect. There, there are obviously classics. And I think that might make a good show one day. Best launch games ever. Um, we have all these good ideas on air. On air, and then mind. we forget them. Mm, we'll forget uh, them. But, yeah, so it's uh, nice to see you all now. Sing the theme tune, write the theme tune, wear the hoodie. Jobs are good, and <laughs> Yes. I went to Primark, secured myself a PlayStation. I know, I've seen some of their PlayStation range. It looks pretty good. Pretty cool, some of it. Yeah. Um, 
Before we head to the launch, Tom, though, let's hear from a man who went all in. Did he? On PS2. Oh, I love these. Mark. I love knowing the facts. Gamers. Now, I can't, obviously, because it's an audio broadcast, share with you <laughs> the picture, the screen grab he sent of the receipt, which he still kept, which is awesome. He says, oh, oh, check out my personal loan agreement from August 2001 <laughs> that I signed at Dixon's store. And we moan about console prices <laughs> today. I paid five seventy for my PS2 console back then. What the hell? Comes with stir of echoes, the gone in 60 seconds DVDs. I've written lazy, but it's actually crazy taxi, the bouncer and Gran Turismo 3, a memory card, extra pad, and three years cover and other stuff. Jeepers bestseller for a reason, eh? Well, I tell you what, Mark Garage Gamers. Oh. You must have been wearing a sign that day because it sounds like Dixon's pure sales assault team <laughs> bombarded your senses with a flashbang, sticked a PS2 in your bag, signed off some paperwork and kicked you through the door because who, who, Tom, buys extra cover for an electrical item from a Dixon sign? <laughs> Not me, that's for sure. I, I take my life in my own hands. Tom, Tom's laughing nervously. Oh. I'd say he's done the cover when he was feeling Mate. flush. Mr. Mark Gage Gamers, I only laugh because this is like a uh, this is like going into the future and seeing me go into Curry's on PS5 launch day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you do it on finance? Yeah, I'll have a 4K. Tell me why I'm at it. Go load for it. it. Up, yeah, load, load it up. up. Load Get it in the, the back. I best take the estate car today. I think if you went there oh. with that mindset, you'd feel like you'd won a quiz game show. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know what? Like the generation game or something. You're like just yeah, I'll 4K have TV. I'll have an espresso machine. I'll take yeah. a Hoover <laughs> washing machine. Oh. Toy. Do you do discount for all this? No. Oh, okay then. No, and just there's more interest. We can't do this much finance unless you take the cover package with a three-year minimum max accident damage waiver clause that excludes all accidental damage you could ever issue on this device. <laughs> It protects against tsunamis and hurricanes. Yeah, read the small print there. <laughs> if, if contained in a bunker 50 foot down under sea level. Yeah. All that jazz. Uh, that was Mark Garage Gamers. He gave us some fun and guffaws there, didn't he? Yeah. Back to the launch, though, Tom. That's uh, where we're going to have a look at the American launch titles. We'll wrap up and head into the city to get in line, Tom. It's fever pitch down here. Let's have a look at the launch titles. Let's go through. Now, I thought... Wow, quite a long list. This was quite a long list of uh, North American launch titles. Armored Core 2, Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore, Dynasty Warriors 2, ESPN International Track and Field, ESPN X Games Snowboarding, Eternal Ring, Evergrace, the aforementioned Fantavision, Gun Griffin Blaze, Kesson, Madden FL 2001, Midnight Club, didn't they? That was a launch game, Tom. That was quite a good one. MotoGP, yeah. NHL 2001, Orphan, Cue Ball Billiards Master. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2, the sequel. So terrible, the main two of them. Rid Racer 5, Silent Scope, Smuggler's Run, SSX. Another good launch game. What console can launch without a good snowboarding game, Tom? Street Fighter it had X. Two. So good it had two. Yeah. Street Fighter EX3, Summoner. Uh, Swing Away, Tekken Tag Tournament, Time Splitters, Unreal Tournament, Wild Wild Racing, X Squad. What was so, the other yeah, uh, it, SSX? What was the other snowboarding game? The uh, what's the ESPN, ESPN X, X Games game snowboarding? Snowboarding, yeah. Okay. So just uh, quickly scanning over these brings back some some good memories, really. I of, think you um, had Gun Griffin Blaze. No, we went with uh, Orphan. Well, we didn't have all these at launch. We got like summers. What was Orphan? As we, it was um, like a third-person adventure game, like RPG. Uh, but it's terrible, isn't it? It was good. It was good at the time. Uh, I think I got ready to rumble boxing round two, and my brother got Disney's Dinosaur, and then we went and spent our Christmas money, and we got time. Sp- I don't know how we managed this. We got Time Splitters, Smuggler's Run, and Orphan. Uh, the thing is, Smuggler's Run and Midnight Club, both Rockstar games at launch. Mm. They've come a, a long way, haven't they? Very rare to get one game a, every couple of years. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think there's a good, a good mixed bag in, in that overall line. What would you, we know what you picked then as a child. What would you pick yeah. now as a grown-up? I think knowing how good SSX was... You're allowed three games from this pick. Okay. Two. Well, I'd, I'd still choose Time no Splitters. Three. Time Splitters? Um, I'd still take Smuggler's Run. I thought Smuggler's it was really Run. enjoyable. And I'd probably go with SSX. SSX? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with SSX. I think that could be quite cool. 
Uh, I'm intrigued by. I don't know whether to get Dynasty Warriors or Kesson. Mm. I might get Dynasty Warriors. And. Um, For that full PlayStation launch feeling, you've got to have a Dynasty Warriors game. you got to, haven't you? And uh, probably Midnight Club. Yeah. If I'm allowed another one, it'd be Time Splitters. I don't. It does take me back to good memories of the uh, magazines, like showing little screenshots that would now look really bad quality. And my mum and dad going to Curry's and and saying, "Oh, they've only got like two, two or three games to choose from, and they haven't got many consoles coming in." And we other my brother like, "Oh my god, oh my god, what are we gonna do if we don't get one?" <laughs> and uh, Father Christmas came through, and uh, good time was had by all on. Well, uh, the on Christmas that note break. of someone coming down the chimney tom and making all your dreams come to, uh, <laughs> we've had a listener here who's come up with an absolutely brilliant question. My PS2 library says, I'd like to know what games you'd want to see if oh. Sony came at us with a PS2 Mini. Also, best console ever, controller emoticon, heart emoticon, trophy emoticon. That's a great question. Great question, um, Tom. I think, let's pick ten. We'll do this quick, because obviously we've got to crack on with the show. I know... Some PS, uh, like the mini consoles, tend to come with like 20 games. We'll do 10. Okay. GT4. That's PS3, isn't it? Or did it come on PS2? It was on PS2. Cool. Grand Turismo okay. 4. Yeah. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. Metal I agree Gear with Solid both. 3. Yeah. Uh, Time Splitters 2. Yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. Or would you put Vice City? Vice City had the like the era nail. I, I but just, so is San when Andreas. people look back, I feel people cite Vice City more. Let's have them both. Okay. We've got ten. So G- Vice City and San Andreas. Okay. <laughs> I feel that might be a bit excessive. Are you going to put G1 Jockey on there? No, unless you want it on. No, I'm joking. Okay. I have played it. It's all right. Um, I've got six. Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, Warriors. Ico, Shadow of the Colossus. I'd have Shadow of the Colossus, I wouldn't have Ico. It's I'm, good. I'm but putting it... Ico on. Okay, that's fine. So you've got one more, your pick, take it. Oh, now you're asking. Just trying to jog the memory. Um... I'll pick for you, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers. Oh, man, I keep forgetting how many great games there are. Return of the King. Instead. Okay, all right. A great question, my PS2 library. And if we uh, ever do posts in the future, don't feel you just need to give us a memory. No, no, what? no, no, no. What? Not happy with that last pick when it could have been Smackdown, Here Comes the Pain. Okay. Some listeners are probably thinking... Which we'll get to shortly. That's a strange pick. Uh, <laughs> anyway, good question. Very good question. Well asked. And and a, a good point, Tom, to say, don't feel the need just to put your memories down. Send us questions for these features too. Yeah, that's really that good. It get, gets us still, talking it? and uh, hopefully uh, well, everyone can Talking a new listeners, Tom. In. I've searched with James up and down the yin-yang, in and out of the evil. Uh, looks like AJG1392, ring the bell. New listener. Got to be the hours spent on Time Splitters 2 and 007 Nightfire. Random weapons spawns made them games hell as fun, but for me personally, it was all about Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo? Gran Turismo. Although I started on GT2 in the 90s, the PS2 installments are by far the best in the series. Fast forward 15 years, and the reason why my weekend toy is an import. Hmm. Uh, I'm hoping you might be referring to a car or a motorbike and not a bride. Yes. Both hail from the far east. Sure, can we? Uh, Tom, do you want to read on with my gaming spaces uh, comment? Yeah, uh, they go on to say the PS2 is, in uh, my opinion, one of the, if not the best console ever made. Uh, I had to sneakily buy one when they first came out, as my parents didn't want me spending five hundred pound on a console. Two pound a week out of my ex mum's little ones catalogue for over ten mum's ex mum's little ones catalogue. <laughs> For over two years, I still own a Mark I PS2, though sadly not my original one. I still love it as much as when I first owned the first one. I always have a special place for the PS2. Mm. Tom, also, long-time listener, first-time poster. Don't forget, if you want to get your voice heard, Tom, here's how. How would they do that? Uh, So you can uh, 
send us your comments on Instagram. Uh, you could message us, direct messages on Twitter, or you can reach us on questions at Unofficial Controller Podcast. Awesome. And this is underscore N, decimal S, decimal P, underscore. What's NSP. Uh, Siphon Filter, the Omega Strain, or Logan Shadow were some of my favourites back in the day. I'm not really sure why. I think it's Siphon Filter, good Laughing game. Laughing he cries emoji. Yeah. yeah, I do think that Siphon Filter by Ben Studios, yeah. Days Gone Fame, yeah. did well on the PS2. Um, he is a current new owner of the PS4, so um, might recommend that he's gone to him. I've just given him a massive backlog to play, so he's he's churning his way through. He's currently playing Spider Man and Ooh, enjoy game. enjoying that a lot. And I've told him to get Last of Us on the uh, free download. Do you, though, do you think that's do you did what did you think of that? You never played it on PS3. I really enjoyed it. I thought the story was great. Um, it, it probably didn't have as much impact on me as if it had got into the launch day hype of it all and it was like the next big I thing, you wasn't it? a bit sport for you as well, the giraffes and all that. Or did you yeah, the, the giraffe bit. Um, that would have been good if it hadn't been the, sport. I remember seeing the intro as well years ago with the with his daughter, etc. We'll not say any more yeah. if you've not played it, but um, yeah. A, a well, really if you've not good. played it, find a way to play it. It's yeah. It's currently free to download if you are a PS Plus member. Uh, so yeah, go for it because the sequel is coming February. And surely, if they've got a PS3 in Mummy's back bedroom, they can just go get the game for one pound fifty. Yeah, and absolutely. The games. Uh, so let's sort the numbers. Just how did how many did the PS2 go on to sell, or how much of a feat was it to achieve those numbers? Mm, One hundred and fifty nine million. That's some number. The only thing that comes close is the Nintendo DS. But for home consoles, its nearest is the original PlayStation with the 102 million. I mean, Tom, that's a devastating number. Uh, next closest to that is the Wii with 101 million. And then it's the PS4, the only console with a chance to get close. But with the PS5 coming out, I can't see them. Uh, they've got 100 million on the PS4 at the moment, Tom. I think 59 million is probably yeah, a I don't, stretch. Yeah, I think you're right. So, And if you look early in the episode, we mentioned that the console's competitors at the time... Uh, the Xbox and the GameCube didn't fare too well against this uh, powerhouse. The GameCube sold 21.7 million, uh, which would probably be a happy day in Tokyo if it wasn't for Sony kicking sand in their face. Yeah. And the Americans equally got laughed out of the arena with the original Xbox, a console I'm very fond of, topping out at 24 million. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a vote, didn't we, to do this uh, history of, and the GameCube and the PS2 were very close. Yeah, they tied, and yeah. put it down to a tiebreaker. I think uh, the original Xbox and the GameCube have, have gone on to have a bit of that niche, like, cult following. Um, Definitely. Great consoles at the time, but just couldn't stand up to that DVD player, plus very good, sort of slow feed of quality games. On the on the PlayStation, it had a lot of licensed games as well, a lot of third party support, etc. So yeah. Okay, and now it's time to hear from a man with more hours logged at Deb's Babs peephole than time at the <laughs> easel. Tom, Comic Pictures seventy nine, aka our very own Adam the Artist, which is uh, on Etsy forward slash Comic Pictures along those lines. Yeah, go, go pictures check of out. the show, pictures of geek culture all yeah. over the shop. Check it out and. As always, the best comment every month wins a print from Comic Pictures, a.k.a. Adam the Artist, Tom. Yeah. And this week, they've made it very hard for us to pick, haven't they? Yeah. There's been some cracking entries. Yeah, and this, week, get, this uh, week especially. Okay. I think I've got a rough idea of one of my finalists for uh, the coming weeks. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, pick that out in a few weeks. But, so, uh, read out Adam the Artist then. Yeah. What you got, what's he got to say for himself? And I'll see if I can agree with some of it, or all of it, or none of it. You know, until the next gen, gen came along, uh, PS, PS2 was the console. It was probably better than the first Xbox, even though at that point Halo was pretty groundbreakingly good. But games like Colony Wars, Thunderhawk uh, with Fluffy Dice, Gran Turismo, Medal of Honor Frontline, it was pretty awesome. Is that the front line where you storm in the beach with you and three others? Yeah. Excellent. Kicking their ass back yes. to the far of the land with you and your mate. <laughs> uh, in fact, I don't think there's been a good helicopter game as Thunderhawk since it were, uh, since the PS2. It really was a great console. The 360 was well better than the PS3, though. That being said, over the years, I've had 
both main consoles from uh, Microsoft and Sony and have enjoyed uh, both of them a lot. Very fond memories of the PS2, though, even though it was ugly and uh, dual shocks are rubbish. Uh, I can agree with some of that. I can't agree with all of it. Um, I don't think it was a particularly good-looking machine, was I it? See, I think it is quite fetching. I like that sort of vented design, and I also like the way when it was coupled with the official stand that had that blue fade. You know, the USB socket on the front had the blue fade? Yes, yeah, yeah. The yeah. actual official stand had that blue fade. I thought the Slim looked a lot better. Mm, I like But that. I never owned one. No, I, I still like the Fat Boy. Yeah? But I'm... As we know, Tom, I'm a very, very strange individual. You certainly are. Where have we got to? Well, imagine you're at a cocktail party. Some suave dude says, he likes PS2. Well, so do you. Mm. Here are five iconic games that started uh, that started on the PS2. I, 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 James wrote five, and we're going to go through a hell of a lot more <laughs> games than that. So, uh, <laughs> bless him. Grand Theft Auto series? Yeah, so the uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, I, I remember going down to Electronics Boutique in uh, in our home city and, and um, picking up GTA 3 and a Smackdown game and something else, which I can't oh, remember what it was. I've got a story about Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, and putting... We, 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 the two other games we got, we just never barely got played we just put GTA 3 on and just like wow I remember, you can go anywhere you can do I remember I would not really like oh, oh, let's let's get this out there I was in the Navy yeah and at the time I was in the Navy the PS2 was out mm. I hadn't really seen much of it apart from maybe little snapshots at yours and there was one time I was at this base and there was there was like rows and rows and rows and rows of beds there was absolutely loads of this crammed in this place I was walking down this, this corridor one day and I looked to my left and the lad had brought uh, a TV <laughs> and a little CRT. Right. Playing this game and I looked round and it was raining in Grand Theft Auto. And he, yeah, yeah. he was, uh, so I just sort of leant up a wall watching. I kind of loosely knew the guy and uh, started watching. And he turned around and I was like, this is amazing. And I was like, i just been watching. I saw you hit a car. I saw you drive off. I saw the hood flip off. Yeah. Like I've heard you getting in, changing the radio station. Like, like I was watching the rain come down. I saw people putting up umbrellas and running off. And I'm like, this isn't just happening in like this. This seems to be happening as so though this is like a, a proper. And he was like, oh, it is. Look at this. And we sat down, started playing it. And I was like, this is, this is beyond a game. I think because the sequels, Vice City and Sun and Dress, were so, so much better, we forget how groundbreaking that first one is. I often go the... back to it, and I still get that vibe with it, but it feels so empty now compared oh, to Oh, yeah, the absolutely. But it, I, in its day, it was the king, wasn't it, for a long time? I don't think time. 3 even had licensed music. I think Rockstar... No, it didn't. Their own. It didn't. I think it might have had two or three maybe official um, sort of songwriters or, or singers, but... Yeah, it was uh, certainly good times. Yeah. Uh, then on to Vice City. Um, just I wow, never that vibed would... with that as much. Oh, I no, I, I love that I straight away. See, this is why it I just made you... me want to listen to 80s music, watch 80s films. Even though I was a child in the 80s, like, it just it nailed the you vibe. You were even born in the 80s. I was born in 84. <laughs> If only this was a video podcast, people would see me sweeping my jaw into a uh, <sighs> dustpan and brush and reattaching it to my head. It's the hair dye, apparently. You, well, you're dyeing your hair off. and beard. I'm glad it's an audio. Well, I'm not happy it's an audio podcast because people could see the transformation <laughs> of your barnet on a week to week basis. <sighs> well, more so shades you in your hair than grey on a bookshelf in a local <laughs> uh, charity shop. Have you ever been in a charity shop and looked in the book area? Four million copies of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, sticking with Grand Theft Auto, just lastly, uh, San Andreas. Best game ever made. Still iconic now. It's pretty high up there. Although I don't even, I don't think it's in my top ten. Should be really. Well, listen to the top tens episode, Tom. None of them featured a Grand, Grand Theft Auto game. No. As consistent, as hypocritical as ever. What's up next? Because you've waffled on about this far too long. Uh, Grand Turismo Four. Yeah. 
Uh, Ico. Yes. You didn't like that, but I think it's <coughs> it was a, okay. It's a standout title from the console. The thing is, I played Shadow of the Colossus and then played Ico. So oh, I was never going to go right. Yeah. Now, was it? Uh, Shadow of the Colossus next up. Great game. Uh, yeah. I played the remaster on PS4, which looks stunning. Is it any better to play? Yeah. Controls are a lot better. They're clumsy. And they, 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 they were clumsy to begin with, and they still are a little clumsy, but they're so much better. Mm. So. I might pick uh, it up. Yeah, oh, well worth picking up. Uh, Persona 4, Tom? Not really had a chance to play the Persona oh, series. See it. Yeah. it looks great on the Vita, but when you play it on the PlayStation 2, it's the same experience, and you're thinking yeah. this game is old, and it feels almost like it's knocking on the door of a PS3 game at times. You're like, this is wicked. With the presentation, the way the screens flip and cross, it's a great-looking game. And yeah. the soundtrack, I can't... I could go on for hours about that game, but I'm not going to. Metal Gear Solid 2, or the Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 on the PS2? Well... Metal Gear Solid 2, what can we say? Great game. Zone of the Enders, a game that came out, (laughs) the only game that came out where it featured a demo disc that I spent more time playing the demo than the actual game, to the point where I must have completed that ship level on Metal Gear Solid 2 demo countless times. Just so much to see. There is. So much to see in one demo. It is unbelievable. That's why... It does have me a little hype for Death Stranding because he has got that attention to detail. Moving on, I went to then get the full game when it was released. Bit disappointed because back then there weren't, there weren't many spoilers. So you got uh-huh. finished as Solid Snake. Then you're playing as this guy called Raiden. I thought it was all right, actually. I thought that worked quite well. There's some epic scenes in that game, some great boss battles. Definitely. There's a bit where Snake like dives off this tanker after the Metal Gear um Metal Gear Ray, I mm-hmm. think it is. I think it is Rain too. Yeah. And it's just like it was movie quality. Metal qual- Gear Ray. <laughs> it was movie quality action for a for a console way back in a time when it shouldn't have been that good. Mm. I think a graphical benchmark for the PS2 that was. Yeah, well they were bending the rules of the of the console at the time. I watched a Digital Foundry video on that particular oh, that right, game okay. or mainly the tanker yeah. level especially yeah uh, and they actually were able to rip the camera out of the third person and drag it back and the lightning yeah. effect we might talk about this on the show before yes. but the lightning effects are happening on a field in front of the camera and the lighting's being used by the rendered the helicopter in the game and they're using the light from the helicopter to illuminate the area wow because there's no other way of doing it and yeah. very some real very clever cool. stuff yeah um, I remember going into first person view and the rain kind of going on your uh, screen. Well, first person view in that and in the one on the PlayStation 1 always blew my mind because you could move around in first person. Yeah. And it looked as good, if not better, than any first person shooter out there. <laughs> True. I think you're right, yeah. Look at look, look at the bar section on the boat mm. where you could shoot all the different bottles and you could go oh, into yeah? the um, larder and you could shoot the flower and it would pour out and yeah. you could shoot... If that had been in first person all the way through, you'd have been your jaw would been on the floor. Yeah. We're playing it third person with these different camera angles. Great game. Any other picks, Tom, for yourself? So um, yeah, I mentioned SmackDown. Here comes the pain. Now this is the pinnacle of wrestling games on the PlayStation. Is this the story for the ages? This is this is the story. So the last time I was looked up to. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 not true. Um, yeah. Uh, do you want to tell the story? You, well, okay. So it's a I, rainy, rainy November evening. Well, it was. I have to. We have to wind this back, and I have to. I'm afraid I have to do another Navy story, so I don't sound like Uncle Albert. But we were. It's all right. We were away <laughs> during the war. We were away. I can't. We might have been doing the firefighting strikes. We were, and we got. Yeah, I remember it being on the telly. Yeah, we got yeah. bussed to another. I had a PS1 and a screen and me and a couple of the lads were playing this in one of the places and we got bussed across to this other uh, station that needed some support. And while we were waiting there, uh, I looked around and saw some lads. I thought they were watching WWE. And I got a bit <laughs> close to the screen and I was like, what's this? It was Brock, They were Brock Lesnar and someone else and they are fighting in the cell. Yeah. And it was like nothing I'd ever seen. And I, I was like, this is amazing. So I watched him play it, and I, I got, and I was like, I haven't got a PS2. Uh, but I know a man who has. I know a man who has. And I had, <laughs> or a boy I had, who has. I had a PlayStation 1, and I had a <coughs> load of games for that that he used to take away with me. So I went and rented uh, Here Comes the Pain from Blockbuster, 
brought it back home, got my SmackDown 2 PS1 <laughs> game, opened it up, took the disc out, put the box of the game in, shooted uh, around the corner to Tom's. What car were you rocking then? Something 80s and sporty. It was either, I think... The Sirocco? It might have been the Sirocco, or I might have had that Galant that I duffed up in that car <laughs> park after driving for a ridiculous amount of hours. <laughs> we digress. Yeah. Uh, so I popped round, and you were all excited that I'd come round, and I was like, let's play... That we're this, just going to play some Let's play some this games. wrestling game. I brought Smackdown 2, and I think you were like, hm, well, I've got Here Comes the Paint. I've got Brick, just bring it. I don't know why yeah. I want to... Then Why I, do I want to play? You like weren't a... looking, so I took the time to open the tray, put the oh, game in and close it. it. And then, Tom, you should probably take off from here. Yeah, so me thinking we're going to go old school and backwards compatible. Play a couple uh, of pixelated messes on the <laughs> PlayStation 2 via Smackdown 2 on the PS1. Um, yeah, turned it on and the screen popped up. It's like, this looks quite crisp. It looks like a PS2 game. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> oh, my God. Smackdown, here comes a pain. Yeah, because you would have been a smaller boy, so no doubt that you... I'd have seen it in the magazines, getting excited, because the rumour has it, it was um, actually a decent entry, because Just Bring It was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? It was. And I think they had one more after that, which might have been No Your Role. Um, but yeah, we we uh, we must have played that all night. Uh, the, the story mode especially is so in-depth, I know you've likened it to... Uh, the MLB, the show, just because of how in depth the backstage stuff is. Oh yes, you could like live the show and and work it like you were you were actually in the WWF mm. at the time. The latest the, the, MLB nineteen, not the other one. Yeah, um, the the roster is unbelievable. Like I've looked at that uh, on videos recently, and it just seemed to they had the timing right where they just had everyone in it. I also think that... Oh, and they had classic Undertaker They had well. some... Well, yeah, they did. <laughs> they had had some Bambi-legged attempts, hadn't they, with the first yeah. two ones, which was yeah. migrating from PS1 to PS2. And they'd done a good job. But here comes the pain. I Do mean, you... at the time, I didn't think graphics could... We say it's that yeah. so I didn't think graphics could get any better. But uh, I think one of the things that nailed it for me with that game was the animations of the characters doing their individual like mannerisms like mm. the the big stars like rock and stone cold etc uh, it just made it seem more real it almost felt a little arcadey at times as well which was a good thing yeah um but yeah any other picks you've picked a wwe games at it time splitters 2 kind of nailed it and uh, Time Splitter's Future Perfect, which was a sequel to that, both great games. Well, that had more of a story, didn't it? That was. Uh, yes, it did. Right? It was like a real good time travel story. I thought uh, I'd love to see a fourth one of those. I think it deserves it. Might have um, yeah, I have heard rumours. Has THQ Nordic acquired it? <sighs> yeah. Mm, you never know. They might remaster <laughs> it. Don't, didn't they bring back Straw Humans? People wanted it, they did it. Yeah. So fair play to them. Well, I, f- I feel like the, there's something we're missing on. PS2, like a big game that I'd have picked. It's outside in the rain. No one cares. Yeah. If we did care, it'd be in here, <laughs> wouldn't it? It's true. Uh, so that's the games. But what else? The PS2 is compatible with Component, and they're usable with modern TVs and exhibit their best picture when played through these. You can you can pretty much drag the PS2 into the HD realm, mm. uh, which is awesome. Some games even support. Is it 48720p? Gran Turismo 4? Yeah. It might even go up to 1080p. Yeah. So don't forget, to, and so's uh, 24 as well. Yeah. There's a Sly series as well on here. Jack and Daxter. Ratchet and Clank. Honourable mentions. And one go. more. Time Crisis 2 with the G-Con 2 light gun. See, when you take Epic. the pressure off, Tom, it all flows through. <clears throat> don't forget to grab a genuine controller and memory card, though if you want to use the backward compatibility, you need an original PlayStation memory card to do so, to make your saves. Oh. And if you're going to connect, uh, also if you're going to connect your console up to a CRT, don't forget the host of the light gun games, but also don't forget SingStar, iToy, Buzz, Guitar Hero controllers, the PS2, <laughs> unfortunately didn't escape the mountain of tat. Uh, I guess it was the Wii of its generation as far as tap yeah. was concerned. And Tom brings us to the end, really, and that wraps us up. But to send us to the bridge this week, a rather poignant one from Radbash Gaming. And I'm going to read this one out. Man, I love the PS2. I remember when I got it back, uh, when I got it from a gift from my dad before Christmas, before he shipped out to Iraq way back when the first game 
I was given Kingdom Hearts and Dark Cloud with it, and I believe that's why those two are in my top five games of all time. I remember spending hours clearing dungeons in Dark Cloud, and I'd build the towns completely <laughs> wrong. Lol, to this day, I still have my original PS2, and even when it breaks, I'll always keep it, because it's the last thing I got from my dad before he passed. I love the PS2. Bad Bash Gaming. <laughs> that was... Uh, Beautiful, man. That was a beautiful way to send us to the bridge. Thank you for that. Great entry. Thank you to everybody that contributed this week. I hope we did the the PS2 justice. Uh, still alive and well, Tom, as far as the race yeah. boots concerned. And the listeners, is it that time? It is. When the big man makes a house call, you better be ready. These guys got in touch to show us their pickups from Stingray's boot. You can too. Just hashtag Stingray's boot on Twitter or Instagram. Instagram or <laughs> Instagram or Twitter or email us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Tom, I've stalled for you. Are you going to stall for me? You're not yeah. that kind of guy. You're going to throw me under the bus. First up, we've okay. got a, uh, a nice little pickup here from Iowa Retro Gamer. Um, he's picked up the new version of the Nintendo Switch, which um, apparently has had a few small improvements, including extra battery life. He's got himself a 12-month Nintendo Switch Online voucher. And a, um, a a link, call me Zelda one more time, looked like a mouse map, but I don't think it is. Is it a screen protector? It is, yes. Beautiful. That's nice, that. Well done, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. Danny plays in the yeah. boot, despite Tom's I've got, rather... got her on there now. Got her on there. Are you now friends with I can, her? I can see I Danny I thought I told plays. her to block you. Well, She's I'm quite obviously... a big fish down at the, uh, the, uh, no. the wagon and horses, so... Oh, eyes across the park. Kind of no, no, karaoke night, you know. You and Danny are doing like a uh, uh, duet? Yeah, the uh, Dead Ring I- Islands of- in the Stream. Oh, right, oh. Wow, okay. I don't know what to say. Anyway, <laughs> God Hand there uh, by Capcom. Bit of an underrated gem, Danny plays. Not easy to find in the wild, and she's gone and picked it up. Well done, good work. My game in spoof. My spoof? game in spoof. My, today I think I've been sniffing glue or something, Tom. <laughs> must be must be tipex from all the corrections in the script. <laughs> My gaming space as uh, in the feature and in the boot, and they've got in themselves one of the uh, clear Game Boy. I do pockets. like yeah, I like clear consoles. They look pretty cool. They do, don't they? I love nice to see the McGubbins inside the green board. Oscat TV picked himself uh, ages. Oscat. You didn't read out Oscar's thing in the... He just said PS2, now he's talking my language. He got his read out. And he's in the boot, so he's everywhere, isn't he? He's everywhere, as always. Oh, you're going to like this next one, so I'll let you take it. No, oscat has got ages. Yeah, I've done that one. All oh, right. Road to Thinner Me. He's bought this digital- digitally. My launch game for the Wii U, Tom. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Is this the one that was on the Wii? It was on Wii U. Yeah, I didn't have this, did I? I had the other one, the poor man's version. Tropical Freeze is excellent. Yeah, I didn't really have good. this. Here's my man. If, sorry, I Tom. should just say, if you're okay. a fan of uh, Tropical... F- no, we'll get to that in the new releases. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Don't worry move about on, it. because something here, Tom, absolutely yeah, so see, awesome. that's the one I was looking Retro at. Retro Magnet. I'm all over this guy. He's got a Star Max Bomber from Starcom, one of the greatest tour lines ever made, and a not easy to find game, Blood Will Tell. It's not cheap yeah. either, so good pickups. Definitely. Uh, that me talking to him in that post resulted in me talking to him to way past my bedtime. I had to turn my light off, and Mumsy was like listening at the door because she could hear screen taps. Me and Retro Magnet talked about old school cartoons till God knows what. And he's German, I didn't know, so I embraced him in his mother tongue as well. That's wunderbar. Multilingual. Language man, you are well. That I might be, but I can barely master my own language. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> well, let's try a French version. Charaban. Ah, bonjour, Charaban. Charaban. Je m'appelle Charaban. Charaban. <laughs> we he's... hope you're well. And uh... one hopes that was enough to summon him. But he's got one of my favourite games on PS2. Another one we missed out. So I'm glad we've gone in the boot. Grim, Grim, Grimori. Odin, uh, Odin Sphere for PS4, Dragon's Crown Pro on the PS4, and Dragon's Crown... No! Zoom in! Muramasa on the Vita. This is his Vanilla Wear collection. Nice nice selection of games there. 
You played Gringa and Gamori? No, you've told me about this. Very Ooh, good. Look at that. Uh, Odin Sphere, which was a PS2 game originally. I think we'll I skip know. the uh, self promotional thing for us. Uh, oh, yes. Next up, Radbash Gaming got himself a copy of Call of Duty and a fine selection of CDs. Got oh, Simon cool. and Garfunkel. You've got that Fleetwood Mac greatest hits as well. That's a Eagles. Real I think that's the Eagles greatest hits. Uh, Christmas sing along. That's what I now. That's He's, what I call Christmas. Um, next up, we've quite a, got a big benchmark for the big man himself. The muscle of Daddy's the inglorious bar stewards. Proud dad moment. Proud dad moment. The night before I left for California, Devin Zilla beat the first level of Sonic after a few tries and the first level of Sonic 2 on his first try. Proud of you, boy. Daddy Good Zilla, line. wheeling the boy. Get him close to whatever device you're using. Put it on loudspeaker. Devin Zilla. You the man. You're a gaming guru. Right, don't... When you're at school, and people know that you're a little bit of a gaming celebrity, you just let them know. When the official controller got your back, son. The Zillas. Reunited after Daddy Zilla went on a cross-country epic, Tom. He certainly did. I, um, I guarantee you will have picked up something. He will. He will. He'll have driven past that shop and gone, oh, I'll just stop in there and have a quick look. Oh, it's too late. I've bought a bootload of stuff. I've bought 4,001 games <laughs> in, the, in the job lot. Uh, Retro Magnat. Has... I haven't got him. You've missed out Road to Thin and Mean. I haven't got him. Another one missing from the oh, collection. Oh, Road to Thin and Mean. Well, he's rocked up with this look, Tom. Super Mario 3D World. Oh, great game. You? Great game. Great game. You probably need to look him out. I you will, because to... he's a fan of the Wii U. And you need to add him, add each other. I will. One of Get the most beautiful done. members of the show. Inside and out. Yes, sir, that is true. Retro Magnet. We got there in the end, Tom, or eventually did. I did. Uh, nice he's got some box there. More Starcom stuff for you. Oh, and everybody's golf on the PS4. Good game. Uh, I can't remember what they were called. Star Fox? Star Fox Fighter or something? I forget. Radbash Gaming got himself a, a Street Fighter comic. That looks pretty cool. Nice artwork on that. Um, some nice DVDs, Road to Perdition. Oh, um, you missed someone out again. Who? Uh, two seconds. Radbash Gaming. I'm just doing him now. Where, where's this thing? What was that first thing you'd seen? Uh, Street Fighter comic. Top okay. right. Nah, well, I'm back in the room. Sorry for that. Above the Lizzie McGuire movie. <laughs> a not so great pick, but <laughs> but who cares, really? Um, and some uh, various, like, Rugrats and Turtles Sky stuff. in the World of Tomorrow. Looks like he's got some, yeah, Turtles duvet cover and a Rugrats pillowcase. There's a mishmash of a cartoon bedding set, if ever there was one. Yeah. Oscat, he's got himself a uh, concrete genie. MLB 2K13, NBA 2K13, double pack, need. What is that Wii U game? 30 great games. (laughs) Never seen that one. Oh, now. I'd love to know your thoughts on Aliens, Colin and Marines. That was what was going to be like the game. Yeah. And then I haven't just... got that. I've got Aliens vs. Predator on the PS3. Mate, there's a level I've seen someone complete on that game and they literally just run through the whole level. <laughs> and nothing kills them. They don't fire a single gun. <laughs> That'd be great if it was... A, if that it... reminds me. If any listeners can help me out, Davey Bones, a loyal, loyal listener, yep. has found me a copy of MLB for the Vita, if memory serves. Mm-hmm. And he's requested for me the innards of a GameCube box. It's his bizarre request. It's what he needs to finish off one of his Resident Evil GameCube sets. Oh, if I okay. can get him that cardboard, he can get me a game. They're plastic, the GameCube boxes. Dude. The console box. The console box. Oh, the actual... Um, right, what, the Resident Evil Silver? And the train arriving at Platform <laughs> 3 is Tom. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> you mean the Silver Resident Evil... Uh, I don't, I don't know about the actual finer details. Okay. We need the inside of the GameCube console box's cardboard innards. I've searched up and down the UK. No one's willing to part with the innards of their GameCube box. I had one a few years ago. You burnt. Back when I had a massive retro collection. Now I just don't. Uh, next up, Otaku Bram. Got retro himself. Magnets put in Death Road to Canada. You need to oh, it. yeah, sorry, I did. Oh, yeah. Attack Bram, you know, I love a PSP game. Metal, Gear, Metal Gear Acid. It's a 
Castlevania, the Dracula X Chronicles. It's not a cheap game. He's got some absolute belters there. Uh, well done. Danny plays Armor Core 2 and 3 on the PlayStation 2. Nice picks, Danny. You've been down, you've been down cash converters again, though, gal. How are those labels coming off? If you've got some tips, let me know. Because as I said to you the other day, I managed to get a label off. And the whole glue that held the label on, I managed to then spread in a really thin <laughs> layer across the whole front of the game. Love it. Brilliant. Uh, Iowa Retro Gamer, he's got himself some N64 games, one of which is the wicked-looking Turok Rage Wars Black Cartridge. Mm. Very nice. Uh, Harvey Retro. No, Destruction. Road to Thinner Me. He's got Yoshi's Woolly World. Add More? I, I will. Donkey Kong Country. Uh, oh, that's That was the sad story. He managed to get it. Tropical Freeze, and I think the disc was damaged. So we had to take it back. Didn't have another one, which is why I downloaded digitally. Road to Thinner Me. Yes, get him in your life, Tom. Harvey Retro there with a double fatty case holding destruction. Yeah, Darby I used to too. like them. Uh, made you feel like you're getting more for your money. You're yeah. Out one disc in it. Yeah. <laughs> Sharaban? Sharaban. Sharaban. Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. Nice. I've heard of that one. It's, uh, it's an anime. Looks like a base on maybe some manga or something. Yeah, it's a pretty Dreamcast cool statue. game down there, though. Mm. Awesome. Uh, Daddyzilla 80. Look at this. The Zilla's game room. It's still work in progress. Peace, homies. That's a, that's an epic games room. Good luck. What's that on the floor down there on the left? Looks like a spillage. Look at them shelves. How are they still standing? They must be overloaded with just endless games. Oh, my goodness. Got a SNES and NES mini. Look, they look wicked. Look at that. Oh, and chest. the Mega Drive mini. Well, listeners. That is awesome. How are, the listeners are thinking, what are they talking about? How would they look at what we're looking at, Tom? Well, you need to go on Instagram. Yeah. Hashtag Stingray's boot. Yeah. And follow along with us. Oh. Oscar and uh, if you want... Sorry. It's all right. Carry on. If you want to be obviously featured on there, hashtag Stingray's boot, your latest pickups. Can be anything. DVDs. We've had socks. We haven't had socks, but we've had a pillowcase, we've had a trainer, and we've had a car. We've had two mm. or three cars, actually. Yeah. Uh, Oscat.tv, he's got his Crisis Core Limited Edition PSP, and he's also got the Brady Guide. It also looks to me like he's got a the special edition version of the game as well. Well done, Oscat. He's also picked up oh. some Pokemon Funker Pops. He's also got that really... I've got this, but he's got that really beautiful limited edition Final Fantasy X2 Strategy Guide. Uh, Game Boy Matty uh, gone and picked himself up a Switch controller, which is his very own. It's, he says it's time to practice so he can beat my dad. The show's immortal two-year-old. It is. He's now 38. <laughs> <laughs> He's got uh, a wife and two kids of his own. Retro Collector Ray, uh, Super Mario on the NES, Donkey Kong on the NES, and the Tiny Toons game on the SNES. Scroll to the right, though. Retro Collector Ray. Possibly one of the only listeners rising to the challenge and uploading their copy of Street Racer. Remember, we <laughs> threw down the gauntlet, listeners. We did. For you to display every single... Co- like Sharaban every week comes on and goes, oh, I've got all the Tekkens, look at me, and we look at his Tekken show. We asked one of you, Lily Livered listeners, to upload every single copy in one shot of your Street Racer collection. It's looking like Retro Collector Ray might win that championship belt. Yeah. You know, like you have the monthly submission there, like the main event, the WWE Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. I wonder if the first person to upload all the street races in their collection is going to end up being the unofficial controller Intercontinental Champion. Could be. Hmm? Could be. Or is it uh, like the hardcore? It's like the Sting Race boot belt, <laughs> and it can be fought for at any time. Anywhere, just anytime. whoever's got the best picture. Yeah. Do you absolutely. want a, Do you want to award <laughs> an immortal Sting Race boot champion? And then they we, they can scrap it out next week. Let's choose one next week, and we'll we'll. Um, they don't we'll win build. anything for this, don't panic. No, no, we'll, we'll we'll think about it next week. Okay. Uh, Ash Ga- we forget. We won't promise. Ash Games Room uh, got a copy of uh, Sonic Three on the yeah, Mega Drive. That's why he's holding up three of his five fingers. I can count. Uh, Dead or Alive <laughs> uh, Dimensions on 3DS. Never played that. Welsh game on to Tom. Tekken Seven, Rocket Knight Adventures. An air combat on the PS1. Good titles. Eclectic mix. Uh, Mark Garage Games got the Uncharted. I've got Retro Magnet again with his Michael Valiant cartooner, <laughs> a well known French comic about a racing car driver. Uh, we missed out on getting that in the UK. I will be serious. If you can speak even a little bit of French, you need to check it out. It's an absolutely okay. wonderful comic. 
Um, was yeah, he so was German? I thought Mark Valiant, Michael Valiant was French, but hey, do you know what? He's probably European, Tom. Multilingual European type. <laughs> Uh, Mark Gage Games up next with a Sackboy con- uh, controller holder for the That's PS4. Cool. I want one of those. Have you seen the Crash one? Because I had him at EGX last year. Yeah, I just think Sackboy's a bit more, bit more piece of me. Hipster. Um, Uncharted Lost Legacy way, and Tetris way Effect. Way more hipster than Crash. Um, yeah, nice pickups. As low as Hidna. I haven't got him, but I follow him. Oh, oh. Tom, come on, you've been blocked. Oh, Diddy Kong I, I Racing forget. DS and Advance Wars Dark Conflicts. So I'm surprised you're not all over that, like a hot rash. Boba Loba, sir, I love you. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee, gone and got that from Gotham Games oh, as well. Oh, I remember getting that launch. Great I'm surprised game. Gotham Games has still survived. I heard uh, in Finster Game a sense of muscle down there. Molotov cocktail through the front window. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's Told getting him getting, getting out ever, of control. You ever trade games in my village again, I'll cut you. You know is what he? it's like? He's now, thing is, he stands at the back on a little Vespa, wearing a white suit with a black shirt and a white tie. And uh, one of those... You Trilby. Know, Trilby, but probably a little bit more gangsterish than that. But we right. don't know the name. We only know one hat name. The Trilby. Uh, Stetson. Uh, that. Okay, he's wearing a Stetson in a village in the UK in a white suit <laughs> with a black tie, with a white tie and a black shirt and a rose. We're rambling. It was going somewhere until we dressed him as a put, put a cowboy out. It got out of control, as it usually does on this show. It did. Uh, yet another retro. Uh, been down the Salvation Army and picked up a selection of Wii games. What about uh, Game Boy Matty's pumpkin in his car for his Ghostbusters mate, picture? you're way ahead of me. You're way ahead of me. From, well, I'm Dumbo Blober and we both did that. Then I got Oscat, which you We skipped. definitely... Yeah, I've just seen Ezlo and Midners. I think we've gone wrong somewhere, though. Anyway, you're at Game Boy Matty with his Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster pumpkin. Now, I, uh, there's I, a two-year-old with some skills, Tom. I know. Excellent knife skills, rival, rivaling Finster the Gamer himself. Uh, yeah, nice. Harvey Retro coming flashback. in with an absolute classic flashback. Great oh, game. look at that controller for the N64. There's it's got more Midner. dials on it than F1 fighter jet. Tom, they went to the Not- Net- Nottingham Retro Games Market and they were showing us what they'd found. Scroll to the right. Oh, yes. Be happy. I'm They've obviously happy. listened to this show, found out you're a fan of the GameCube, found out you're a fan of Lord of the Rings. And Return f- of the King. Found your favourite EA hack and slash game. Thank you, Ezlo and Midner. I'll thank you if that ignorant yeah. dog won't. <laughs> Uh, Sensei Rius, Tom. Finally, his visage is exposed on the podcast. There he is, the uh, dragon the warrior upward. He is. Uh, he is of known to be anyone in one-on-one combat. Anyone, uh, absolutely anyone. Bruce Lee snapped his neck like a twig. Chuck Norris snapped his neck like a twig. Steven Seagal He's, broke his finger like a twig. He is a faker. He's a fake martial artist. Legit, he is fake. Watch the videos. I want him to come in here and do you in. Mate, honestly, watch the videos. <laughs> anyway, AJM Brown, they have they were on last week with their GTA 5 uh, collection. Yeah. They've gone and got the GTA 4 collection. That's cool, it's nice. That Have art you seen book's it, wicked, that yeah. bag, that art book. You know, I'm a fan of that game. Yeah. It made me very tempted to go pick it up. I don't know how much it was. Yeah. But I want it. Uh, beautiful. That's, uh, Maybe you can slide in my DMs, Alex. I think that's your name. If I got that wrong, hunt me down and shoot me. (laughs) Uh, That's the full turn of the wheel. Well, what about yet another retro gamer rig? Mario Galaxy 2, picked up a copy of Borderlands, Super Mario Bros. Wii, Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, do you remember that? On the Wii? No. Wasn't it just, you know, in one of the Kongs on the snare, you know, yeah. the one where you line up the barrels? Yeah. I thought Barrel Blast was just a game completely made from that. <laughs> I, I know they're in um, Tropical Freeze and Donkey Kong Returns, so, yeah, maybe it was. I don't Tom, remember it. that's officially all the dips in the boot for our listeners. You managed to stay awake, focused, and almost breathing. I was, I know. Um, on fire. Don't forget to hashtag Stingray's boot or email us for your pickups to be read out. Tom. 
Don't you worry, sunshine. We've got a boot full, um, and you've got 2020 vision, so you'll be absolutely fine. Looks like James hasn't put 20p in the printer, but we're nearing <laughs> the end of the show, so we're doing all right, friends. We're doing all right. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call... Do we call him down there, or do you want to call him down after the ramble? Uh, he's coming down now. No, oh, hang on a minute. Before he comes down, what's he been up to this week? Oh... He did a car boot sale down in the village hall, keeping it old school. How he started out, really. We're going to have to ban you from doing these ones, aren't we? It's not very really exciting. Is it not? Mine are always like, he's on the edge, on the chase, away from the Federation. He's still a chilled one, mate. He's still a chilled one. Last That's week, fine. he had a couple of chilled ones. Me and ones. him had a couple of Santoris down the wagon and horses. Next week, he's, he's going to be on... On deployment with Major Tom in the Territorial Army. <laughs> Is he? Conscripted. <laughs> He's needed. Super for... Army soldier. Yeah, they see him like that guy, the Spiv off Dad's Army. Oh, Private Walker. Private Walker. He's the Private Walker of the uh, Unglorious Bastard, the Territorial Territorial. I wonder Army what he's got unit. in the boot this week for the, the video or DVD pickup. Anyway, Tom, he's tearing down the drive as we speak. As always, the precision driving, making those stones fly up in exactly the same way every single time. He leaves only a shadow. He, he leaves footprints. He takes only photos. Stingray. He's out of the car. The boot's popped. Springs rattle and roll. Wattle and roll. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot. What's left between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle Endor? This week, don't forget, I can never say that right. <laughs> and if I did, the show would be cursed and the hex of Tamakadun would descend upon us. I don't know what that is, but I'm obviously speaking through a third, my third eye. Not that one. Get off it. The one in my head. These are the new release highlights for this week, October 7th to 13th, 2019. Listeners, these are out on digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed, but could be region dependent. Tom, first one, Space Robinson. You think you're hard. It's out on PC October 7th. You think you're a die hard? Here you will die quick. Proper <laughs> hardcore RPG action where you will die a million times across a myriad of procedurally generated levels. Extremely difficult but highly addictive indie gem in your Steam game collection now. Huh? Speaking of indie gems, please go check out our uh, Top 5 Indies episode which was last week. Um, if, you want, if you want to get the down low on uh, some of the Hottest indie titles out there. Uh, next up, we've got Call of... Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yes. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Your Bilingual. Your life experience has never crossed you across the bounds no. of Call of Cthulhu before. Uh, out on Switch on October 8th. Call of Cthulhu, the official video game inspired by Chaos Sism's classic pen and paper RPG, Brings you deep into a world of creeping madness and shrouded old gods with a Lovecraft's iconic universe. There's plenty more to read out there, but Tom's obviously not interested in that steampunk epic. So, uh, Revenge on the Switch, October 8th. This is the write-up, guys, so just sit down, take a sip of your milk. Features, 100 different endings. Choose your path. Every decision leads to a new ending. Will you find the real one? Is there such a thing? Only one way to find out. Lots of aha moments. It's a, a partridge simulator, Tom. <laughs> Lots of aha moments. The world doesn't change with each new game. You do. What actually? Well, actually, it does change, but that's a secret for you to find out. A big bunch of unlockable stuff. New playable characters. Hints, costumes, visual effects, and more. Bazillions of secrets and pop culture reference. They are, you know, secrets. So we won't spoil them here. Winky emoji. It's the end of game boss in that Tony hairs and you have to fight him off with a bit of cheese. You shove it oh, in his face. The partridge simulator, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Maybe that's one of the unlockable costumes, the smell my cheese you mother <laughs> uh, jumper and uh, chino combo set. <laughs> Love it. Uh next up uh, with think... fork and cheese equipped in right hand. <laughs> uh next up ukulele and the impossible layer. This is gonna be my mummy mummy pick for the, the week, impossible please may I have. Impossible lair. The listeners message in in their thousands when you decide to say the word lair. They do. And the other day when you claim to have got it right, I think it might be in uh, Adam the Artist was like, why can't you say lair? I'm like, I don't know, mate. <laughs> I don't know. Say lair. 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 Very good. 
no one can place the accent, you see. I learned it off Stingray. <laughs> so you're never traceable. <laughs> I think they could pin you down to your street just to pronounce <laughs> the word lair, but there you go. Uh, so, yeah, ukulele and the impossible lair. Out on, <laughs> <laughs> out on PC. Say it how you want. I will. <laughs> Uh, write the same theme tune, sing the theme tune. Uh, PC, PS4, Xbox, and Switch, October 8th. There. Oh, are... Before you go any further, okay. is this your mummy mummy? It is, yeah. Okay, well, let people know. And secondly... You got that? No, yeah, I was, I was trying to find it. There's another one of those classic moments where PS... For PC and Switch get a day exclusive on the game. <laughs> I love it. Just in case you want that exclusivity of a <laughs> full 24 hours. If you own the Xbox, you're all out of luck, son, but you've got to wait another day. Anyway, um, we've desecrated your mummy mummy, which is Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, which is coming out on PC, PS4, Xbox and Switch on October the 8th. Give us the readout, yeah. handsome. They're back... And they must run, jump, and roll their way through a series of challenging 2D levels, face a puzzling overworld, and rally the Royal B Battalion to take down Capital B and his impossible lair. Each level offers beautiful, rich visuals and detail and depth. Ukulele and the whole host of colourful characters, good and bad, uh, realised in stunning 2.5D. The overworld isn't just a hub to hop from level to level. It provides a whole separate gaming experience. Explore and unlock more 2D levels by completing objectives and puzzles. Rescue royal bees and find collectibles. Uh, lots of collectibles there. Alternate level states. Think you got a level figured out? Try it in an alternative state. Flip it round. Uh, be at the impossible layer. Players are free to tackle. <laughs> players are free to tackle capital B's impossible layer at any time. That's However... right. <laughs> However, they may find it too much of a challenge. Pronouncing the word layer without the help of the Royal Bee Guards. <laughs> uh, no, we uh, need to just. Oh dear. We need to just uh, quickly discuss the fact that. I'll tell you what. It's... Is ukulele and the impossible lair love, leave, or lair? It's definitely a lair, isn't it? Got... Devin um, Zill is so proud of you for saying all is. the bigger boy words. Yep. I'll be joining him in, uh, in school in no time. Um, <laughs> September's coming we, around. Yeah, quick. it is. It is. Um, we need to just discuss the fact that you can tackle the last dungeon straight away in this game, which I think is a really cool idea. Saw it in Breath of the Wild, the fact that you can go That's straight over. one of those classic moments where Oscar makes a level and finishes the game in two seconds. He's just that good. He's that good. Uh, do you want to take the next one? Because I've got well, a feeling you yeah. like this one. Well, I, I should have mentioned earlier, well, I've not played it yet, but I've been watching someone play it. was it. on when I walked in. Mumsy was playing it in the bunker. Concrete yeah. Genie on the PS4 PSVR October 9th. It's one of their natty little exclusives. And uh, if you're into artistry in any way, it's a very beautiful game to experience and enjoy. Pick up your magic paintbrush and start painting the abandoned town of Denkska. Back to life as Ash, the imaginative teenager at the centre of this touching action adventure exclusive to PS4. Surrounded by pollution and pursued by bullies, only you can restore this once bright and bustling seaside town by harnessing the power of living paint to cleanse its streets and alleyways. Create your own street art on Denska's polluted walls and watch as the mischievous genies you paint spring into life to come to your aid. Each genie possesses magical elemental powers uh, that not only help you overcome puzzles and see off your adversaries, but are also the key to changing Ash and Denska's destiny. Very good. Uh, I'm just going to pick out our VHS this week. Oh, crikey, I'm fired up. What we got? Got Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, God, Station. Oh, he's in two, sorry. What a great... What You've a got great. all the historical figures in this one. That's that the epic one scene at the end where the they end. do the school presentation at the end. Yeah. Genghis Khan, like, doing some martial arts. Platos. Yeah. Great. Billy the Kid comes up, shoots the lights out. Billy the Kid, Joan of Arc. And we're going for a double whammy this week because we we fancy a bit of a binge watch for TV series. Okay. Series one, Peter Case Phoenix Nights. There's a comedy that everyone forgot was even funny. It's it's still one of the best comedies. Can I you hear me now? I haven't watched it since. Can the you time. hear me now? I, oh, has it not? It's still good. Okay. So good. I take your word for it. Shall I take this next one because it's space? You can. If you don't know about this next one, Tom... I think I told you about it. 
did okay. I? I think it might be Deliver us to the moon, game. out on PC October 10th. This looks great. So if you've got a 486 game in PC, crank the sucker up. Uh, Deliver us to the moon is a sci-fi thriller set in an apocalyptic near future where Earth's natural resources are depleted. A lone astronaut is sent to the moon on a critical mission to save humanity from extinction. Uh, next up, we've got a Knight's nice Quest PC, PS4, Switch. Out. Have, you, have you seen oh, this? Oh, the exclusivity. Have you seen this? It's like a Zelda-like, isn't it? If but you don't like download poor. this this weekend, the fans are going to probably bay for your blood. They're going to want you off the show. Mm. This is everything you've ever dreamed of. I've read the reviews. It's everything you've ever dreamed of. So you keep saying. Uh, that's It's out uh, October 10th on... PS4 Switch and PC, but it comes out October 11th <laughs> on Xbox with that. Uh, sadly, a day late. Um, Lots of boasting down the schoolyard about those kids one playing day Night's exclusivity. Quest. Do you reckon the- in the next 10 years it's going to be like, we've got an hour exclusive on that? Did you know? I'm going to download it in an hour it and you're going to have to you. wait until I've done it. I'm going to spoil the opening hour for you. Um, yeah, so that's a gorgeous action adventure on an epic scale. Plays rusty, a kind hearted but clumsy adventurer who accidentally starts a chain of events which will destroy his world. Solve mind bending puzzles, fight challenging enemies, defeat huge bosses, and platform your way through a fantastic open world in this lavish take on classic action adventure games. Wow, okay. Next up, Eterno Blade 2, PS4, Xbox, Switch, October 11th. Hatred infects the land, its corruption has created the dark abyss, a destructive void, powerful enough to break the fabric of reality. To prevent its destruction from spreading, the ancient lords of time hide three time-altering weapons, known as Eterno Blades, by scattering them across dimensions, but only their power can restore the universe to order. Tom, an RTS game coming up that's not your mummy mummy, as the show's regular <laughs> RTS guru. Once again, you fame. Look pretty cool, this. I've, I'd seen some footage of it. Okay. Frostpunk console edition, PS4 and Xbox, out on October 11th. Offering players a complex strategic challenge alongside a rich narrative featuring an alternative take on the 19th century industrial revolution. Frostpunk weaves a story of how our planet mysteriously freezes, putting an end to civilization as we know it, and forcing the human race to adapt to the harsh conditions. As the leader of possibly the last civilised society on Earth, you're going to build the city your survivors live in, discover new technologies, explore frozen wastelands, and most importantly, manage and rule society to prepare it for life in the unforgiving world. Sounds pretty good, that. Mm. Next up, Grid, PC, PS4, Xbox, also October 11th. Are you prepared to take your place in the Grid World series? Developed by Codemasters, Grid is returning with the all-new high-speed experience, placing racers the heart of racing. <clears throat> Choose your own path, story, and define your legacy in the motorsport world. Each race is action-packed with accidents, hindering your progress. So overcome these challenges, become a Grid World Series champion. The original Grid was awesome. I was about to ask if you I've ever only played any. I've only been playing that recently, within the last two months. Well, I heard... Holds up. I watched a, a, a video on YouTube about this latest one, and they were going on about how it's a nice balance of arcade and simulation, mm, and it got me thinking one, about... Yeah. Um, Project Gotham and thus make me think have you played Grid? It's not, not quite not this that. new one. I don't think it's it's not. Is a, it more track based? Like yes. so, yeah, yeah. So, there are city tracks. Is there Formula right. Two cars in it? Maybe it probably goes all the way up to Formula Two because they've got that license because of the new oh, Formula course, One game. Yeah. Two cars in it. They've also had a lot of experience off the back of Formula One. Yeah, they used the original Grid's engine. Um, is it called the Ego Engine? They then use that to make the new Formula One games. Yeah, and now they've used that more new version of the Ego Engine to probably make the new Grid game. So mm-hmm. life imitates art, imitates life, Tom. It does. Uh, last up, we've got Killer Queen Black on the Switch, October eleventh. Fight for your hive in a strategic team platformer with three ways to win: hop on the snail, hoard berries, or wipe out the enemy's queen to claim victory. Uh, features fast-paced four-on-four team combat with four unique weapons: sword, morning star, laser, and stinger. Three roles to play as queen, soldier, and worker, each with their own strengths and responsibilities. Six different battlefields, each requiring different strategies. Tom, that second sentence sounded like an excerpt from your diary. Hop on the snail, hoard berries, or wipe out the enemy queen to claim victory. <laughs> uh, Tom, sounds like a night on Beatles rock band. He's He's dropped his boot. <laughs> Peripheral wipes are available on the door. Uh, he's dropped his boot. His wheels span off, but silently, because 
we're that show that only has a couple of sound effects per episode any more we could afford more if the show gets bigger we promise more sound effects one day when the show's huge and we go for the blu-ray release we'll go back like lucas and we'll have a load of cgi <laughs> effects in there much yeah to, much to the fan chagrin. to the like the fence game we'll be like i remember when he he was we'll delete, used to talk about we'll delete all the podcasts off the off the thing, all the original versions, and then we'll yeah, re- re- the re-release them versions. Yeah. for an extortionate prize. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. That's the Lucas Tom, way. Anyone who paid that's any the Disney ad- way. It's true. I oh, know, painful but true. Mm-hmm. Anyone who paid attention at the beginning of the show, unlike your good self, knows that when <laughs> Stingray leaves, I ask you what you're hoping to play. Um, I'm going to play in a bit more. I'm I'm kind of waiting for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So at the minute, I'm just trying to finish off any last games I need to that I've been playing the past month. Uh, oh, Fire wow. Emblem, Astral Chain just finished the epilogue. Probably be able to finish Link's Awakening before then as well. I was really tempted to get Concrete Genie, but I've not got enough time between now and Modern Warfare mm. um, to to do that. But I'm sure it'll be on the back burner one day. Um, so yeah, a bit more uh, online gaming this week for me, mm. mainly. Mm. How about yourself? Well, when I get home, there'll be some parcels to open. Ghostbusters uh, the game. The remaster? Mm-hmm. Very nice. Just loved it so much. Bought it twice. Yeah, it was really hard not to buy that last week as well. Uh, well, I've got the PS3 version. I only finished it probably in February. Yeah. Played it and didn't it? It was all right. Good. I think that was uh, it. Was one I'll of the games again. when we originally talked about doing the podcast that like you'd probably do a, a retrospective on. I'd like at to some point. Unfortunately, the idea is kind of gazumptous because the remaster's out. Yeah, yeah. The scoundrels. Well, I anyway, mean, that uh, concrete genie is also prowling around, waiting for me to pounce on it. Uh, Are you going to be playing that in VR? Give the VR mode a whirl. Maybe. Apparently, it's good. I've got LA Noir VR case files, MLB. Yeah. Um, I've got War for Cybertron to finish. I've got re- no Fall of Cybertron to finish and War of Cybertron to start. How I'm curious, like sometimes I have this problem of like when you've got that list of that many games to play. Yes. Do you tend to just get on one and you're like, actually, no, I'm just going to play this for a while, or are you like, right, I'm dedicating half an hour to this one? Um, I think with Ghostbusters, I'll have a go. I'll dip in and out. I'll probably yeah. ro- roll it forward. It's not a game that's like that out there as far as controls are concerned that you can't pick it up the only time I think where the difficulty spikes is I've mentioned this many many times it's a penultimate level it's ridiculous it's almost impossible you've just got to keep playing it until you glitch it I hope they've fixed that I've not in every review it just sounds it feels like to me in all the reviews and all the magazines and the websites they played the first 10 minutes and then made a quick snap judgment on what they think it is. Yeah. I honestly don't feel like they've played it through to the end because not mm. one of them has mentioned, unless it's been fixed, the really bizarre, glitchy, penultimate level. Oh, the, right. the only way you can do it is just <clears throat> keep loading and keep flicking this thing and hoping. It's complete, complete mm. random look whether <laughs> you're going to get through that level or not. It takes no skill. Yeah. Uh, so I'll pick that up and down. Like I say, it's not too hard. Uh, Fall of Cybertron or War for Cybertron, whichever is the first one. Again, that's not too difficult. Um, Concrete Genie, probably the game I'll end up spending the most time with. Again, MLB, it's pick up, play a couple of games, put down. Pick up, yeah. play a couple of games, put down. Um, again, good games. And then I'll probably have a smattering of some uh, older games. I might... There's... <coughs> I've it, got some DLC of the last bit of DLC for Spider-Man. I need to finish two of the challenges and it's done. Wow. 100% platinum and every bit of it. Um, you still enjoy playing that with the boy? Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, although last time we went on there, the DLC definitely increased the difficulty spike. Yeah. The first game was a cakewalk. And we played it through on the harder difficulty. Oh, I remember you saying some of the enemies' light like, sections are, are really tough. And some, when you've played it through on that difficulty level, then you're doing the DLC with its increased difficulty level and you're trying to clear some of these rooms and get some of the secondary achievements. It's, it's, it's interesting tough. with some of these titles that you go back to that some of the control inputs just stay ingrained forever. Mm. And you can pick them up and play them dead easy. Others, like... God of War for me is one that I pick up and I'm like, how do I do that again? 
it takes me a good like half an hour to be playing it to I get have back to admit, into it. When I first played that, and I didn't play it at launch, I played it later. I played mm. it beginning of this year, if you remember. Yes. And all the way through the game, I didn't really feel like I was in, on top of the controls for that game. It's a good no, game. I, I reached a point where I, I but I don't I, think it's as good control wise as people make it out. Oh no, definitely, definitely not as easy to pick and up. And I as never think. felt like uh, I ne- when I was throwing that hammer, I never felt like Thor. I felt like a really clumsy uh, dad defending his back garden. <laughs> you know, I'll um, throw it; it would miss a load of guys. I'll pull it back, and it would suck through the guys. Yeah, but initial accuracy with the throwing axe was terrible. It reached a point where I was doing the the last Valkyrie fight and did feel like I've nailed it now. But yeah, tough tough game to get the controls down. Is that is that us, Tom? Yeah, that's us. Is that the show done? It is. Line drawn on in the sand, we're done here. Yeah. Okay, well that's all we have time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming and remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. See you, Tom. Cheers, man.